Hey everyone, welcome to The Roundtable with Vienna White, Season 1, <laughs> Episode 39. I'm your host, Millie Rouge from the band Vienna White here in Edmonton, Canada. This Roundtable is a real music production. Thank you all for tuning into the show today. I want to introduce you to all of our guests today. We have Jesse Ritter, based in Nashville, Tennessee. Hey! We have Gabby Roke, based in Tampa, Florida. Hello! And we have Lisa, based in Riverside, California, from the band The Bell Rays. Yep. So welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being on today. Uh, let's jump into it. I want to hear a little bit about your guys' musical journey so our audience can know more about you before we get started chatting today. Um, so, Jesse, can you give us a two to three minute kind of intro to how you got into music and kind of the music that you like to play? Mm, yeah, so I grew up listening to country radio constantly and I would just run around the fields making up songs on my farm um, back home and just music was always in my head. So when it came time to go to college, I wanted to move to Nashville. So I went to Belmont University and got a music degree there. And my journey kind of took me out of the city for a while. After I graduated, I got a job with Carnival Cruise Line. And so I spent six nights a week performing on a ship. And then I did that job for a couple years and then kind of got back to Nashville and the country music world and writing my own stuff and um, touring around and performing. Awesome. Nice. That's amazing. I have to ask, because I learned about this in my music degree as well. I learned about cruise ships and kind of the experience of them and how interesting they are. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that was like for you? Maybe the positive and positives and negatives of that? It was the greatest adventure of my life and I will never go back. So <laughs> it was, hey, that's what I thought. <laughs> it was like a summer camp and college and prison all rolled into one. <laughs> So what would you say was maybe the worst part about the cruise ship, the, maybe the, le the part that you liked the least? I think the hardest part was just the isolation mm -hmm. because you don't have a cell phone, you don't really have very good internet, and you definitely can't take the weekend off and go see your family. Right. And, you know, for me, it was the first time in my life I had ever been a minority. Like all the guests are uh, mostly American English speakers, but I was one of 10 crew members on my first ship who had English as a first language. Mm. Wow. So that was just yeah. a very strange experience to only have 10 people you feel like um, you can really easily communicate with and mm -hmm. grew up similar to. Yeah. So it was very isolating in some ways, but also, it was like the coolest experience ever. We sang yeah. all different types of music and traveled all over the world, and you will never get that experience any other way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, now, Gabby, I love your setup, by the way. We got to talk more about you, because I know that you've got some background with this video call and everything. So what do you do in your music career? So I do everything, and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... So I started singing when I was like 10. And then from there, like my mom would play bossa nova and stuff on the guitar. And so Jesse, when you were like, I was one of like 10 people that had English as a first language, language I was like, dang, that's probably how my parents felt <laughs> when they came to uh, America. Yeah. So that that's super funny that we never, like as Americans, we never really experienced that a lot. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of times that we ever have to experience that kind of thing because people speak English all over the world. So mm -hmm. we're never really super isolated. I mean, that sounds like a tough ex six whole months on a boat, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so I started and then after that, so my mom plays bossa nova guitar. So she taught me like a few chords on the guitar, but didn't think it would go anywhere. And so but from there, I taught myself guitar. And then I taught myself a bunch of different instruments like uh, the ukulele, the piano, badly playing the drums. But then I started to, I'm like, hey, I want to record my stuff. So as a brave 11 year old, I recorded some really crappy songs into my computer. Nice. 
Nice. And right. I guess from there, I was just like, oh my God, I love all the tech stuff. Like, I want more. Like, my dad's an electrical engineer. So he saw my growing interest for computers and he kind of taught me everything I know. So I learned how to build computers and stuff like that. And now I'm really into video and photography. So how I make money <laughs> is doing videography stuff. I'm a freelance videographer. I film and edit videos for people as well as film and edit videos for myself. So it's uh, nice. It sucks doing everything because in one way it's, it's nice, but then in another way you're like, oh, if I want it to be done right, I just want to do it myself kind of yeah. thing. It's the yeah. worst. It's a lot of work, <laughs> I can imagine. It's like, a, it's a blessing and a curse knowing how to do it all, mm -hmm. I guess. Now I know you're also a, an avid Twitch user. Um, yes. Do you stream music or are you a gamer on Twitch? What's kind of your niche there? I, so that's funny because I wanted to start streaming games on Twitch as well as YouTube, mm -hmm. but it's funny because they have a game called Twitch Sings, so it's basically karaoke. Yeah. So <laughs> I do that every Friday now. Nice. So I'm kind of, kind of getting into both, but I love video games so much. So yeah, when I was getting into tech stuff that was also gaming, mm -hmm. I'd watch my older sister play games all throughout growing up, but she never let me play. <laughs> you just had one save file. Thing. I know, right? You just had one save file and yeah. like, I didn't want to mess up her games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually my partner, he had a little sister too. And he always told me that when she was younger, about like three or four, she'd always be like, I want to play too. Oh so my he God, would that give her a controller and it would be unplugged and he'd be like, here you go. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. The whole time. No. <laughs> yeah. So maybe your sister did that to you too. Who knows? <laughs> I was probably a victim to that at certain points. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so, so much funny. for sharing. Um, now, Lisa, I want to hear more about you and your band, The Bell Rays, and tell us more about you guys. Okay. So um, we're, we've been around for a while. Um, and a while meaning that this is our 30th anniversary mm -hmm. this year yeah. for the band. Wow. So yeah, so probably longer than most of you have even been here. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> that is true. We've been, we've been doing music, so we've seen the changes of mm -hmm. uh, the music industry. And we, you know, even though we're from Southern California, it was it has been very hard for us to ever get into what the traditional music industry was. Mm -hmm. But we learned early on, it really wasn't something we wanted to be a part of. Um, before people were really, you know, talking about being DIY, we kind of saw ourselves on that line because there were very uh, antiquated uh, ways that a singer like me was seen playing the kind of music that I wanted to play. Like, they just didn't do it. So we just kind of always forged our own way. Uh, punk, rock, soul, that's basically what we do. And we figured out a way to do it in you know, travel and do it as well as get all around, uh, you know, finally get, make our way back to the internet. And <laughs> mm -hmm. I know it's a tough process Find to our get spot. There. Oh my God. You don't know. Like, uh, yeah. like Gabby was saying, um, when you realize, oh my God, I, I do everything and it sucks. Mm -hmm. It does. It yeah. does suck because you have to, nobody's going to do it for you. And I, I remember, on our journey, you know, you have a manager, you have these things and, and they say, you just have to give over your control and let them do it. And every time I would do it, every mm -hmm. time I would hand that over, somebody over there would drop the ball and it would be yep. a blow beyond blows. But if you were, and this is, you know, why I'm really glad that this whole hashtag me too thing has come forward. Mm -hmm. It used to be like, if you were a woman and you said, Hey, that's not cool. I I'm actually I'm in control of this. Let me just do this. Yeah. Oh, you're being controlling. Oh. If you're a guy and you do everything, you're innovative. And you're... Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, wow. I've been that for days. <laughs> and I know you guys understand what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As we're all females in the music industry, I think it's oh, really yeah. evident anywhere in the world how much the music industry is male oriented oh, yeah. and oh, how yeah. it's male led. And oh, it's yeah. so hard to break through. Like I myself in Edmonton here, I'm a, an owner of our music company. It's called Yeg Music. So we basically facilitate local live music shows. But nice. anyhow, it's been such a struggle just breaking through the barrier of being a woman and showing up and being like, this is actually my show. Exactly. I'm here. 
I'm in charge uh-huh. of it. And the amount of times I've had people walk over to my partner, my business partner, who's yep. a male, no. and be like, what are the details of the show? And he always goes, I didn't book the show. You have to talk to M- Michelle or Millie, right? So exactly. I understand completely. True life. Yeah, that's annoying. True it's life. a process. That's annoying. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad to hear all about your experiences and kind of how you guys have brought yourselves into the music industry. It's really, really cool to see. Um, now, something I noticed just upon browsing all of your Instagrams uh, the other day is you all have great stage performance. And I know this probably just comes with lots of years of experience. Um, but I want to chat more and kind of dive into it a little bit more. So our topic of the day is how to improve your stage performance. Um, so my first question to all of you is what is your favorite part, the, the joy you find in performing on stage? Um, Jesse, I know you do lots of gigging and I've seen you kind of touring through different places. What's kind of your favorite part about the process when you're in front of people performing? I guess my favorite part is audience reaction, which I'm realizing is what I miss most in this quarantine time. So like as we're doing the live streams, we see a lot of comments and those are like the most important thing because it's so weird singing just to a computer. Um, but I mm. thankfully got to play just for a couple hours last weekend was my first show in two months. And wow. I played, um, you're still the one by Shania Twain. <laughs> and Great song. This couple got up to dance and I started crying in the middle of the song oh. because like I, yeah. and I, I don't do that very often, but I was like, Oh my gosh, I haven't seen this in months. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this is why we do it. Like Mm -hmm. there's somebody there who's smiling. There's somebody there who's singing along and there's somebody there who's dancing. And I kind of, um, thought about this when I was on my first contract and I was finally out of school and performing live a lot. And, uh, I would see these families on vacation on the ships and for the first time got to see them interacting and you know someone might propose in the middle of a song Mm -hmm. or dance or whatever (laughs) and I was like we are like relationship therapists as musicians like we are facilitating date night or the family reunion yeah we we are not just background music we are helping make this experience and this memory and this date night could be the moment that you know, bonds them just like to make it through the next year together. So you just never know what's going on with people and the little ways you're part of their story. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Gabby, I know you have experience with kind of your online Twitch world and I myself (laughs) was a Twitch user for about two years now. So it's a very different experience. Like Jesse was saying, when, you know, you're performing online and you're getting literally online feedback and you're kind of- I know, it's so weird. You finish a song and you're waiting for the- but there's nothing and you're kind of just like, <laughs> okay, no, it's it, so odd. <laughs> at least on Twitch Sings that you get like an ovation so you can clap oh. virtually and then oh. it'll show up on your screen. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. so funny. So I, know, I, I feel like, to, yeah, I want to know more about how you deal with that with uh, the online performance stage. Yeah, I was going to say when you asked this question, I was like, Jesse and Lisa are going to take this one because I'm, <laughs> I get so, because I'm so bad. I mean, like. I, I still get really, I've been performing on stage since I was 10 and I still get so freaking nervous. Mm, yeah. I just like, I start shaking and stuff, but like once I start the song, then it's a little better. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think my favorite part, at least in live performances is, is like Jesse said, like audience reactions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like virtual performances yeah. <laughs> a lot. It's just really fun. Cause I just, it's, it's not like I'm physically standing in front of an audience, so it's a little easier for me. Mm-hmm, totally. So, yeah, it's definitely weird because I'm just singing to my camera, and it's so strange. <laughs> but I like hearing that, like, the studio reverb in my head and stuff like that. Like, I mm-hmm. like doing things remote. <laughs> I'm so antisocial. <laughs> well, I so, think it's interesting because the world is turning into that online that's right. community. It so it, it is actually a good that's thing that you're right. starting to learn that now rather than, you know, 10 years down the road from now when we're all that's VR you, singing to each yes. other. Yeah, yes. she evolved before the rest of us. That's yes. okay. <laughs> I'm living in 3030. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, Lisa, your band being around for so long, you guys have uh-huh. been performing and I imagine being on stage for so long. 
Um, oh, yeah. What is your favorite part over all of these years of performing on stage? What gives you the most joy through it? Well, I used to think it was just being in front of everybody and being able to travel and get to those places and be in front of that that audience and make it seem like you're singing to the one person. That mm -hmm. That's where I feel like the power really is, is you make people feel like you are, even though they're surrounded by people, that you're singing just to them. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, there's nothing that's going to top that. There's no way that I'd ever really feel like um, that that could be trumped in any way. Absolutely. I was wrong. I was totally wrong because now that we're doing these shows, these these intimate shows where we where we film on them. And like you, Gabby, I thought, oh, this is gonna be weird that I'm doing this kind of thing and people don't hear me clap. I I actually like it even more. I feel like I'm wow. talking to people even more directly mm. because they start responding, they start clapping, they say things. Yeah. Um, going back to what um Jesse was saying about us being like relationship therapists, I see that we are actual therapy. We are, in fact, one of the taglines that I put in um, the description of what we do, I call it single song therapy because we <laughs> perform daily. We perform daily on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We do one song each day on Instagram. Um, and, and that was one of the other fears that I had had is I didn't know how often should I go online to, to sing to people, to play to people mm -hmm. because I really want to play. And I just thought, well, who's going to listen? And then I just thought about it and said, well, it doesn't really matter who's going to listen <laughs> as yeah. long as I play. And then the people come out and then they're affected in that way that I had no idea I would ever, um, I would ever even know that people felt like that about us. Right. Absolutely. Um, so I know we talked about the joys and the, our favorite parts about it, but what challenges have you maybe had to overcome with stage performing throughout the years? Um, so Gabby, I wanted to start with you because I know you said, I'm like, you're like, ah, I'm just, it makes me so nervous. But obviously when you're a 10, I'm sure you're way more nervous than you are now. Um, but what are some things, some challenges you've kind of had to overcome and how you did it with performing? Uh, I'm like, I'm sure we all are, but I'm my own worst enemy. So when you mess up that note, even though nobody else notices, you're just like kind of beating yourself up. But at least like by now, like I've learned to just power through it. No one probably noticed. It's fine. Like, uh, but the weirdest thing is when people want you to perform at their event thing and then you're kind of just background music and you don't really know how much mm. you should be interacting with the crowd and it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been a little strange, but I've kind of learned you just have to go all out. <laughs> you just have to commit. <laughs> You just have to commit. So, like, I got hired to do this one event. It was for my college, and it was really, really cool that they decided to reach out to me to perform at this event thing. But it was, like, a bunch of different tents and different things going on, so it was kind of weird. But <laughs> I just ended up going up to people <laughs> individually and singing to them and kind of wow. just obnoxious and stupid. <laughs> But you just kind of have to own it. And because if you're awkward, that almost makes it more awkward. But if yeah. you just kind of be stupid and be ridiculous, then it's it's almost more normal that way. Like you're making people laugh, at least enjoying your performance in some way. Well, and I think what you're you're mentioning is even even though you're saying like you have to just be stupid. I think what you're really yeah. saying is you just have to be yourself. Because yeah, I think that's I really what you're, you're right. doing is you're just, you're yeah. not necessarily looking stupid. You're just being authentic in yourself, yeah. right? Which is hard to learn as an artist for sure. Um, Jesse, what kind of challenges have you learned? And I know through probably your cruise ship experience and just touring around, um, what are some challenges you face with stage performances? I think probably one of the most difficult things is just getting out of your own head. Like, um, like not like, well, if you show up late, that's like the worst <laughs> thing for me. Yeah. And there is so much traffic, especially when I perform here on the Emerald Coast. And there is one highway. It is water, your road, and water. There is no other road you wow. can take. And if there is a wreck on that one road, there is nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And even yeah. if you left four hours early, oh, no. you might not make it. So that is the thing that like makes my head explode more than ever. Mm -hmm. And like... But getting there and, and pushing anything else that happened that day aside and leaving your personal life totally out of it, which is kind of weird because you want to put your personality and your heart into music, but just knowing like you are here 
all that matters is this show and leave any stress of the day away. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of like meditation. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Finding that balance of interacting and giving people just the best of you, but also being authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And Lisa, did you have anything to add to that as well? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, well, it's this basically the same things that they're talking about already. Um, it's just people want you and you want you to be the, your most confident self. Mm-hmm. That's really the thing that gets up there and, and makes everyone else believe that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. We, yeah. we spend a lot of time on our shows um, nowadays uh, really talking to people. That was one of the things I never really liked doing at yeah. shows is actually talking to people because you know, I know my songs. I know if I'm playing the music, it's going to be fine. But um, banter was never a thing that I really thought of as being a, a strong set for me. But I found that doing these mini shows, that it's actually the thing that people, that's how they get to know you. Yeah. That's how yeah. they understand that you're on the same page with them. That you have the same problems that they have. Yeah. And I haven't wanted to do that. I haven't wanted to give that much of myself. I feel like, you know, that's just too much, but I found a way to temper that and, and that feels good. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that takes almost, time. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Yeah. It's almost weird. Cause I feel like there's a line where it's like, am I being too personal or am I letting mm. too much right. of my TMI information out there? But uh, yeah, there's a, cause people want to get to know you for you. But then also there's a point where it's like, all right, TMI. So it just depends. (laughs) Gabby, I think it's interesting. You were talking about finding like the balance between how like I'm my background music and I should just play and kind of blend in or am I supposed to be interactive? And it's kind of that way because some of my shows are three or four hours of semi background music. Some people are watching, some people aren't. But then some is an hour of my songs that I've written yeah. and they're very personal. Mm-hmm. Right. And then sometimes it's a blend because people will show up to the show that's supposed to be background music, but they're requesting your songs and they yeah. want you to tell stories yep. and yep. finding that mix of how much am I basically here for customer service or here to really <laughs> tell my, mm-hmm. my heart and um, finding that line, especially the weirdest is when like the super fans show up to the background show. And I'm like, I, I can't play my songs all night <laughs> yeah. long. That's, that's not what I was hired for. <laughs> well, 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 I think one of the cooler things that we can see happen in these, in this new world is that mm-hmm. um, speaking as a female, like we're taught, we're, when, we're, when we're growing up, we're taught, well, you're supposed to do what somebody tells you to do. Mm-hmm. And the way that they tell you to do it. And they said they wanted me to be background music. But they wanted me to do this. And I remember that was very difficult for me starting out, like saying, well, I'm going to stay in the background. But I know that we didn't really start going ahead of ourselves, like becoming yeah. noticed and being becoming our true selves until we started saying, you know what? I don't really care what these people want me to do. Mm-hmm. I know they hired me to be here, but I know what's best. Yeah, I know that I'm going to give them the best time yes. if I do this my way yeah, and yeah. not talk to them about it, not ask them for permission to do it. Just start doing it. And if they want to stop me from doing it, they can come and do that. Be yeah. the Beyonce of Destiny's Child. Be, be. <laughs> <laughs> go beyond. Just go beyond. <laughs> no one asked Beyonce, oh, do you maybe? maybe you should do a solo act. No, Beyonce was like, I want to be Beyonce. I don't want to be Destiny's Child. I want to be me. <laughs> that is some really good advice. Just be Beyonce. <laughs> be Beyonce. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Actually, Gabby, that ties in really well to my oh, next God. question. Um, so what are some artists that inspire all of you with their stage performance? <laughs> Not necessarily their vocals, but their stage performance specifically. Um, Jesse, who are some of your favorite kind of stage performers? Mm. I think my favorite concert I've ever been to was Pink. She oh. was so freaking cool. Oh, she and, um, and actually Beyonce kind of ties into that too. Like I don't sit and listen to Beyonce records all day. That's not really my favorite type of music, but I will watch any live performance she does. It's on TV. And um, like Pink's show was so cool and so interactive and acrobatic. Um, So like the big production, I really appreciate, but I also really appreciate the 
um, songwriter shows I do a lot, especially in Nashville, where it's just three people there with a guitar telling mm -hmm. their stories. And one of my favorite writers is Lori McKenna. She wrote Girl Crush and Sugar Coat and um, a whole bunch of stuff for Little Big Town and Humble and Kind for Tim McGraw. And she can just tell these stories about these songs so beautifully and succinctly. And um, I really like the, the songwriter storyteller aspect of live performance as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's something to be said about a really good stripped down acoustic set that really shows you who an artist is for sure. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, now, the, I guess, Lisa, who are some of your top favorite artists that, you know, just ooze that kind of stage performance vibe? Um, I really enjoy Peaches. Uh, she's put on some shows that have just been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, where you, if you go and see her live, I saw her, um, one of her first shows um, back in the early 2000s and where she just had herself on stage with a video and like a couple dancers where she'd show up every now and again. And she'd do this amazing set that went back and forth between media. And then I saw that evolve into the shows that she did probably back about five years ago. And I always thought that those were just phenomenal, like just an amazing reach for an artist mm -hmm. to do. Also, um, when I saw Iggy and the Stooges play, I was not ready for what I what was coming there. I had heard for years, you know, Iggy's a great performer. And I had seen him play with bands that were not his band. Mm -hmm. But um, when he got that that uh, that bunch of guys together that were not quite, they were the Stooges with James Williamson. It was one of the most amazing feats I've ever seen with uh, a musician playing. And mm -hmm. I have one more, one more. Mm -hmm. And this was a bunch of people that were seated and this was the um, Hank Three shows. The Hank Three shows that he did uh, back when he did a bunch of, uh, I think it was, he was more doing Hank Williams kind of songs. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I, I was blown away by that as well, so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Gabby, who are some of your favorites that really inspire your stage performance? Well, my number one favorite is Lady Gaga. Oh, mm. I love her so much. I still re-watch her Super Bowl performance oh, just yeah. to like mm -hmm. sit in awe of what she does. The woman sang God Bless America and then jumped off a building to attach to a wire. Like, she's nuts. <laughs> she's nuts. And I love it. I need to, I just want to be more like her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ooh, and ooh. I just love, I feel like the Super Bowl halftime performances are such a good, like, yeah. showcase of stage performance plus vocals. Because I'm pretty sure most of Gaga's set was not lip synced. I'm pretty sure most of it was not pre recorded. Mm -hmm. And yeah. although, uh, their set was mostly pre-recorded, I think, but still Shakira and J-Lo's halftime show. So good. My God, those moms can still shake it. And I love <laughs> it so much. Oh yeah. They're so good. Like, it's just more like, oh my God. Okay. Remember to smile. Okay. Remember to do these dance moves. Remember yeah. to also yeah. sing well. <laughs> yeah. There's it's just so much going on. Yeah. So it's anyone that can do it well is just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so my last question for today, um, what techniques do you practice before going on stage or in rehearsals to kind of improve slash work on your stage performance and to really kind of evolve it? Um, so Jesse, maybe what are some of the techniques you practice before you kind of go on stage? Um, so I practice uh, like introing songs a lot. Whether it be my own songs, I try to really have a very succinct story because when people ask you what your song is about, it probably is about a whole year of your life that you could talk about forever and you need three sentences that can mm -hmm. describe your song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if it's a cover song, you have to know how can I introduce this in an interesting way that isn't just, uh, this is the first cut is the deepest by Sheryl Crow. I hope you like it. Like, that's not very interesting. I like to say, yeah. this is a song by one of my favorite artists who also grew up in Missouri and really inspired yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, we were on the same record label for a little while, and I just hope to continue to follow in her footsteps. This is by one of my favorites, Cheryl Crow. Please sing along. So finding ways to, even if it's not your own story, kind of make it interesting mm -hmm. and um, succinctly give, give an intro and a good story. And then... Um, 
a lot of deep breathing to mm-hmm. <laughs> <enter> myself. <laughs> totally, I agree. I really that. need a lot of help to relax. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> so yeah, just being calm on stage and um, and trying to keep that like mellow, mm-hmm. continuous flow. Yeah. I like that. I, I got to try that introing technique. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. not something yeah. I thought of. Like that's a good structure. Three sentences, make it interesting. Just don't be boring. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. When we were little and um, like whenever anyone would ask us a question, like, what are you studying in school right now? Mom would always like elbow us and be like three sentence answers, Jesse. <laughs> ah, you wow. cannot just say wow. math. You can't say, do you like school? Yes. Yes. No. Ooh. Do you like school? Oh, nice. Yes. My teacher's very nice. We read a good book last week and I'm excited because I think I'm going to do well on my spelling test this Friday. That's nice. awesome. Like, very nice. <laughs> yeah. you, had, very nice. you had to give them a real conversation. So I still have that rule in my head. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's such good. a good rule. Absolutely. Props to Jesse's mom. She's <laughs> on top of the game. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, Gabby, what are maybe some pre-show techniques that you have before you start singing live on stage? So mine is very physical. I like to stretch. You mm. do some some neck neck stretches because that also helps warm up your voice and also to relax (laughs) because we all need to chill out every now and again all the time every day (laughs) but (laughs) but I also do a lot of lip trills so Mm -hmm. (laughs) with e so so I do a lot of lip trills a lot of neck stretches just do a lot of this shaking everything up (laughs) And I kind of give myself a pep talk. I'm like, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's going to yeah. be fine. <laughs> You're not going to mess everything up. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, it's just one of those. If, if I have a white claw, now that'll make the whole process a little <laughs> easier. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> it'll make me a little more confident and, you know, I'll just ooze confidence out on stage. Totally. Yeah. That's some good. people, like I know a lot of artists, they were like no alcohol before really? you know, their performances, but some people, one drink is all they need to yeah, kind of just, just need just a little bit, just that <laughs> little, little boost and that's, yeah. it's good. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Now, Lisa, you've been performing for a long time, so I know you probably have your techniques kind of mastered and kind of down to the T. What are some, maybe some advice or some things that you do before a performance you can give? I love that. The, the number of years that you've been doing, it really doesn't stop the butterflies from coming. Gabby, I totally understand where you're coming from, where you say, yes, I've been doing this forever you. and I still have these butterflies. It happens yeah. every single show. Yeah. It, well. has ne- it has never stopped for me. It's, it's still going. And um, one of those things that I do is I just always say to the rest of the band, no matter what, in 45 minutes, it'll be over. Or That's however long. True. <laughs> no matter what, after, after that, and somehow that makes it be like, oh, yeah, it's not yeah. forever. Whatever's going to happen isn't forever. Yeah. So it kind of sh- it shakes you loose from being in your head about this being this permanent thing. Mm-hmm. And the other thing I have to try to tell myself throughout the entire show is just slow down. What it, mm-hmm. For some reason, your body says everything is going super fast, but it mm-hmm. really isn't. Yeah. You have to tell yourself, no, I need to pull it down. Mm-hmm. I need to just yeah. kind of come down from that. But these doing these, these shows online has really helped with that as well. Mm-hmm. You know, just kind of telling yourself, no, I have all the time in the world, even yeah. though I only have 15 minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a time limit. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I love that piece of advice because even like sometimes with these shows or when I'm performing live, I just ramble on mm-hmm. and I think the nerves really <laughs> kick in. But I think just taking a second, you know, mm-hmm. pausing in between your sentences, Breathe. breathing, yeah, it makes yep. you just more of a human being and just way more of a confident performer for sure. Um, (laughs) (laughs) so thank you all for sharing that was our last question of the day we're unfortunately out of time Uh, we're so lucky to have had you all on if you guys are at home watching this round table on YouTube uh, make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified about our shows we post two times a day Monday to Friday so there's lots of content to watch Um, if you want to hear this conversation via podcast format just search up the Vienna White podcast on Spotify Uh, So before we head out, could I get you all just to say your stage name and where our audience can find you on social media? Jesse, can you start it off? Yep. My name is Jesse Ritter, J-E-S-S-I-E-R-I-T-T-E-R. You can find me at jessieritter.com, Jesse Ritter on Facebook, and at jesse.l.ritter on Instagram. Fantastic. And Gabby? 
Yeah, that was good. All right, I'm Gabby <laughs> Roke. <laughs> and you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, wherever you get your music at Gabby Roke. That's G-A-B-I-R-O-Q-U-E. I have a weird spelling. Find me on Instagram at Gabby Roke as well on twitch.tv slash Gabby Streams and on YouTube at youtube.com slash Gabby Games USA because all the other Gabby Games were taken. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And I also just need to say I did not notice there was someone behind you this entire time. Oh no, he just came in. He's working okay, from home. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I think I'm tripping because I didn't ask that person there the whole time. That's great. That's great. Okay, thank you. And Lisa, can you sign okay. it up? Okay. <laughs> my name is my name is Lisa K. Kaula. Um, you can find me at Lisa K. Kaula, Lisa K. Kaula at uh, uh, at L K L I S A K E K A U L A. It's much easier to spell it than it is to just say it to people because they don't always get it. I'm in a band called The Bell Rays. You can find on Instagram at The Bell Rays, T-H-E-B-E-L-L-R-A-Y-S. And I'm also from a group way back in the day called The Basement Jacks. So awesome. <laughs> nice. I got all of the stuff. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Everyone have a great day. It was amazing meeting you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.